In this example, we're going to look at an electric circuit that has the following components. Now this electric circuit has one battery with a voltage of 5 volts. It has two resistors, one having a resistance of 3 ohms and a second one having a resistance of 2 ohms. And we have one capacitor, parallel plate capacitor, that has a capacitance of 2 microfarads. Now notice that this capacitor is in parallel with this resistor and both of these guys are in series with our second resistor. Now our goal will be to find the current in our circuit, the voltage of our capacitor and the charge on our capacitor when our capacitor is fully charged. Now before we look at any of our calculations, let's think this through. What happens when our electrons begin to flow? When our electrons begin to flow from our anode to our cathode, they begin to move in this direction. And when they get to this node, to this intersection, our current splits. So some of the electrons go this way, some of the electrons go this way. The electrons that go this way begin to accumulate on this plate. So a negative charge begins to accumulate here and a positive charge begins to accumulate here because electrons on this plate are pushed towards this way. And so some of the electrons go this way, some electrons go this way, they finally combine at this node and the final electron flow goes into our cathode. Recall that if our electrons move from our anode to our cathode in this direction, our current is by convention in the opposite direction. So our current moves from our cathode to our anode. So when our capacitor is fully charged, what is the result? Well, when the capacitor is fully charged, the electrons stop moving to the plates. In other words, when this guy is fully charged, that means the voltage difference here is zero between this point and this point. So electrons only move when there is a difference in voltage. And because there is a difference, there is no difference in voltage across these capacitors, that means that electrons stop flowing this way. So when the electrons move from our anode into this intersection, into this node, all the electrons go into this direction. None of the electrons move up because there is no voltage difference on this capacitor. Therefore, it is like this guy isn't even here. In other words, we can redraw this circuit in the following way. Our electrons begin moving from our anode, they move along this circuit, and when they get to the intersection, all of them go down, none of them go up. So it's as if this capacitor was absent, wasn't even there. So now we simply draw this resistor and this resistor, and notice what happens. Now we have an electric circuit in which the two resistors are simply in a uh, series to one another. They're adjacent to one another. And that means that the current that goes through this guy is the same as the current goes through this guy. And that's because of conservation of charge. We know that from Kirchhoff's first rule. But the voltage, the total voltage, 5 volts, is equal to the voltage of this guy plus the voltage of this guy. So, V total equals v, V1 plus V2. So, 5 volts equals, and we use Ohm's law because Ohm's law states that voltage equals our uh, current times our resistance, so I times R. So, 5 volts is equal to I times R1 plus I times R2. Remember, our current and this guy, and this guy is exactly the same current. So, we take out the I because we notice that our I in here and here is the same exact I. So, we take out the I, so we get I times R1 plus R2. And since R1 plus R2 is simply 3 ohms plus 2 ohms, it gives us 3 ohms plus 2 ohms, so 5 ohms. And now we bring our 5 ohms over and we get 5 volts divided by 5 ohms and we get our current to be 1 amp. In other words, our current, when our capacitor is fully charged across this resistor and across this resistor is 1 ampere. Now, let's find what our voltage is and what our charge on this capacitor is. Now, notice that even though our charge is not moving from this point to, to this point, there is still a voltage on this guy. 
the difference in voltage is zero, but there is still a voltage. And the voltage on this guy is the same as the voltage on this guy because these guys are in parallel. Remember, whenever we have any two things in parallel, that means our voltage on this guy and on this guy must be the same. So to find the voltage on a capacitor, we simply find the voltage on our resistor that has the two ohms resistance. So we use the formula V2 equals I times R2, where V2 is simply the voltage on this guy. Remember, voltage on this guy and this guy are different, so we want to find this V2. So V2 is equal to I times R2, so we know what R2 is, and we know what I is, because we found I to be 1 ampere. So we plug in the 2 ohms, we plug in the 1 ampere, and we get 1 ampere times 2 ohms gives us 2 volts. So this is the voltage on this guy, as well as on our capacitor. And now finally we want to find the charge, the charge that is stored on our capacitor. To find the charge we simply use the formula Q equals C times V. So to find the charge we simply plug in our voltage and then we plug in our um, capacitance. So 2 microfarads times 2 volts gives us 4 microcoulombs or simply 4 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. That is our charge when our capacitor is fully charged.